Great time of year. The weather has warmed up. What I'd like to talk to you today about is inoculating your seedlings. The best time to do that when, when I like to do that and also cold frames. Talk a little about a detail about cold frames. Some of the better ways I like to use them to play it safe and to keep your plants comfortable. Please join us. Welcome back. I just saw these guys hanging out in the backyard. They got a couple little babies. Cool beans, eh? Look at that. Hey, join us today. It's Mother's Day, May 9th. And what I want to show you is uh, my cold frame. It's pretty windy around here, so if there's any additional noise from the wind, other than that bird cackling, um, but hey, this is plastic. I made a statement in an earlier video that I don't grow under hot plastic. Well, that's a half truth. We had a huge cold snap. One of the coldest Mays, it's May 9th, Mother's Day, like I said, um, that we've had in years and years and years. Cold spot in Michigan this year. And it is very breezy here. The wind coming out of the west is very breezy. So it's gonna make it challenging to grow here. But I do put plastic on when the high, daytime highs are 48 degrees and the nighttime lows are 27 degrees, it's time for plastic. And also, I just pulled back my convertible. My hoop houses are always convertibles because I want the luxury of being able to peel back the plastic. Now, when the temperatures go back to the 70s this week, the plastic is gone. My screen material goes on here, offering me hail protection 20% of the harsh sun is not going to burn my young plants. They love filtered sun. The pumpkin plants love 20% filtered sun through their whole life, if you can keep them growing that way. So, just so, I'm trying to give more detail this year. We're going to do it week by week and give the fine detail. Um, I am monitoring this. It was 45 degrees this morning outside. It was 50 inside the house. Right now it's saying it's 68, 70 degrees in there. My heat source inside the little house here is a seed mat. This is a seedling mat that I pulled out of my little greenhouse incubator. It heats up to like 70 degrees, 72 degrees. I've got the water set down there, warming the water up. So I'm gonna give them warm water, not douse them with cold water, which would cool my soil. Don't wanna cool my soil when I'm trying to keep them warm. I have it plugged in. So there you go, that's my heat source at night. And sometimes during the day, it's actually running right now. I could leave it shut up a little bit longer. But what you want to do if you're going to work, if you're growing under plastic, if you've gone ahead and secured your plastic, I don't recommend you doing that next year. If you could, convertible. Convertible hoop houses are the way to go, regardless of the size. Even my big kin caves, they were convertibles. I could pull plastic over them. I could pull the screen over them. Even though I screwed it down, you take the screws out. Um, it's very, very nice option. But to grow under rigid, hard, pl hot plastic the whole season is crazy. It's crazy to me. I don't do it. You can try it. But um, the plants, the young plants, they love to be between 50 and 80 degrees. All right. You start getting over 80. They're just like people. Plants are just like people. You get over 85 degrees. I'm uncomfortable at 85 degrees. 90 degrees, I basically shut down. I don't like being out in the heat. I don't want to work in the 90 degree sun. The plants do the same thing. Plants and people are really, really similar. So think about them that way, and you want to keep it comfortable. The plant's going to love 75, 80 degrees inside that house or inside it, wherever they're at. They're not going to like 95. Don't think, oh, 95 degrees, I'll heat it up. The ground will get warm. It'll reflect the heat off in the night. The soil will be hot. No, you're just going to promote disease. The plant's shutting down. You might get the funky monkey early on because you got it too hot in there. All right, so just a tip, you know, what are the best temperatures for plants? They're a lot like people. Between 70 and 80 is ideal. All right, I know you're probably setting back one of those guys says, oh, I love it. It can't get hot enough for me. Give me 98 degrees. I used to have a friend, Tom, that used to say that. 
he made that claim and one day I saw him setting out by his barn. It was 95 degrees out. And I said, Tom, is it hot enough for you? He said, yeah, Mark, yeah, it's hot enough. He was sitting in the shade. So yeah, all right, all right, there's exceptions to every rule, but hey, keep those plants comfortable. If you have any questions, hey, post them below. Comments, questions, concerns, I'd love to hear them. So here's the pumpkin. I've opened up the house. Like I was saying, what I like to do is, for a lot of you, if you gotta go to work at seven o'clock in the morning, if you're under plastic, I would open up one end when you leave at 7 a.m. Even if it's 38 degrees out, the plant will be fine. It's gonna warm up. You know, it's gonna be a decent day where it gets up to 60, 70. Open her up 38 degrees for an hour, ain't gonna hurt it. That way, it's better than to do that than cook it under 95 degree hot sun or get it 100, 110 in there will kill the plant. So you're better off to open it up. In fact, what you're offering it there is hail protection. We get a lot of hail. So whether you got the plastic or screen on, you're offering it hail protection in the spring when we get all of our hail and storms. That's nice to keep that going as long as possible. All right, so just a little tip. Open them up, don't cook your plants. Convertible plants, here's the convertible. I can cover her up at night, peel her back by day. Got wind protection, hail protection. All right, when's the best time to inoculate with mycorrhiza and beneficials? Well, there you go. I got my little pepper shaker. I like these little pepper shakers, they're kind of convenient. And uh, this one's getting kind of low, maybe a little too, and that right now is the time it's a little heavy, but that's all right. We'll just mix it up. The seeds have rooted. All right, we're gonna get for sure inoculation here. I'm gonna lay this one on its side because I want that root to go down, lay it on its side. Maybe it'll take its shell off on the way up. We'll cover that up. These took, uh, the one took, that long root took 24 hours to pop a root. This one here took less than 48. All right, beat it by a hair. Look at that, just literally. All right, there we go. Put that in there and then just cover it up, crown up. There we go, gently, just gently tap them. And there you go, the best time to inoculate your seedlings. In the grow right. room, four days later, it is now Thursday. I had put these in on Sunday, I had stuck these in the soil. And now as you can see, yes it is trying to pull the seed, it's actually trying to pull the shell off as it comes out of the soil. We planted them sideways as you just remember. And this one's doing the same thing. It's coming up and it's gonna leave the shell in the soil. It's pulling itself out by planting them sideways. So here you go. Um, seeds were started last Friday. Today's Thursday. Last Friday, soaked them in a rag. They popped a root by Sunday. Sunday were laid in the soil, as you saw. And now it's Thursday morning and they're popping up through the soil to give you a good time frame. All right, only watered them once. The soil is moist starting out, only watered them once. So there you go. The tomatoes, hey, they're growing. There's my, for some reason, these cherry tomatoes are just huge. The beefsteaks are smaller. I said them out yesterday, they got some wind. The world record tomatoes are looking a little light green, but there's my pork chops and applesauce, world record tomatoes, still in the holding pattern. It's way too early to put them outside. Maybe this weekend I might think about it. But there you go. There you have it. All right, inoculating seedlings. They got inoculated on Sunday as they were placed in the bag. That's the best time to use your mycorrhiza. Many great brands out there, mycorrhiza. Um, wow, Wallace, Ronnie Wallace has one strain that he uses that he recommends. Very good strain, I'm sure it is. So there you go, try it out. Check out Ronnie's website. There you go and stay tuned. We're gonna have the Colossal Green Pepper. Check out the Colossal Green Peppers. Sugar Baby Watermelons. All right, and there you go. There you have it. Growing with Morgan's composting products. They're loving the seed starter. They're loving the veggie dew. We're even gonna get into some worm dew. Check out Morgan's composting website in Sears, Michigan. Lots of great products. We'll be using them this summer. Join us. Keep it a secret, home and garden. Hey, I hope you liked today's videos. If you did, please turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell, baby. Please ring the bell. 
and join us for future videos. We're growing all summer long with Morgan's Compost Products in Michigan. And we'll tell you how to grow colossal green peppers, what we're going to do with that. Um, who can grow the biggest pumpkin in the 150 square foot contest? Clay Heart Garden Cure with Morgan's Compost Products. Um, and we're also going to grow at E-Rise, E-Rise Pumpkin Patch. So join us, please.